This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, now that the game is finally out, Jonathan's taking another look at the lethal and less than lethal weaponry of Ready or Not. So this thing that looks like a sort of off-brand airsoft gun, or paintball gun, kind of is. <laughs> it's a pepper ball launcher. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to keep an eye out for our new season of Loadout, a show where we take a look at the history and impact of some of the most iconic weapons in gaming. You can check out our latest episode all about how virtual bullets work right now. Right, let's get back to the guns of Ready or Not. So this is an unusual sight. In fact, the only time I've ever seen one of these in a video game. This is the, well, one of the training Glocks. This is why, of course, it's blue. Here's our standard Gen 5 Glock 19. So the proportions, we've got shorter barrel and slide, shorter frame. More interesting, I think, is the, the blueness of this, because we do have a 17, Glock 17, full, full height frame, full length barrel and slide, and it's a Gen 5 with the slide serrations, but it's blue. Now, as I think you can tell from the in-game model, as well as the frame being molded in blue plastic, and the red dot sight cover being an insert, it has to be, made of blue plastic. This whole front bit of the slide isn't paint or Cerakote or something, it's actually another polymer insert. This cannot be used for anything other than less lethal ammunition. Cool to see it in the game, it handles very realistically. I'm gonna be a broken record on this one. We've covered, we've covered this game before. I, I play the game as well. All the basic mechanics are sound on these firearms. Case ejection's fantastic. If you're not paying attention to it, you don't notice it. Just stick with a real gun. The cases are moving at speed. They've, they've got motion blur, they're spinning. They're getting chucked out with, with a lot of authority. Things like slide reciprocation, reciprocation muzzle flash, smoke from the muzzle, all the manipulations, they're super slick, very satisfying to, to play as well as to watch. So this is supposed to be an Arsenal AK, isn't it? Yeah, from what I could read, it's pretty specific as to the AK model, Arsenal SLR 107. Without pulling up their catalogue, it looks okay for that. They do make both mach machined and stamped receiver AKs. The dimple over the magazine, though, looks far too shallow and oval to me. I'm not sure that's right yet. But there is definitely an Arsenal, the Bulgarian company Arsenal, not the other one, products offering in this configuration, which is a little bit weird in that it looks like it's solid stock, fixed stock with a very short AKSU length barrel, but it isn't. It's a it's the side folding stock as seen on the AK-74M and the other AK-100 series rifles. It's uh, copied from that, essentially. I was surprised to see the game is at least insinuating it's a 7.62 AK. When I saw yeah. the size of the weapon, I assumed it'd be a 5.45 but it's, at least according to the markings on the gun, it's 7.62, which is mad for an AK that short, surely. A little bit. Uh, now, if, again, if I remember rightly, Arsenal do offer one of these super short guns in 7.62 by 39. You can always tell from the curvature of the magazine what cartridge type an AK is using. It should have a relative fair bit of recoil. So that modern folding stock is, I think, less of a drop to it than the traditional one. So you should have a bit less muzzle rise, but the 762 by 39 cartridge is relatively punchy in terms of perceived recoil. And it's a shorter, lighter weapon as well. We're developing a bit less pressure from the round, but yeah, all, all things considered, that's a bit of an odd choice for a US SWAT team, which is essentially what we're talking about here. AKs are not unheard of in US police usage. I think the description in the game mentions it. Super short semi-tactical AKs in 762 by 39 is a wacky choice. <laughs> or would be a wacky choice if this was reality. The FN57, and it is, I believe it's this pattern of 5.7 rather than the very current version. So this is the second generation of uh, 5.7. There is a more modern redesign of the 5.7 that perhaps the game will embrace at some point. I don't think it looks quite as cool. I think it looks too generic. The first 5.7 with the looped trigger guard 
and this version for me are more distinctive and cooler than the current version. Sorry, FN. I used it with the um, with the ballistic shield a lot just because right. it has a much better capacity. So there's a few missions where it gets close quarters and you can just reach around the shield and sort of blast away with relative safety. Yeah, 20, 20 rounds. Of course, because the cartridges themselves are very slim, so you can fit more in. Now there are nine mil pistols with 20 round capacity, but they tend to be sticking out around here somewhere with effectively an extended magazine. So high capacity, low recoil, and we we do see that in the game. I did I do remember testing that out. Maybe less so one-handed, but in the normal two-handed grip in the game, there's very little in the way of muzzle rise. It, it is what they as what they call flat shooting, which has two meanings. But here, here it means the muzzle doesn't flip in recoil. Now in theory, you have the advantage of armor piercing ammunition uh, or an option of that um, for defeating soft body armor out of a pistol. But to be sure of, of that having the effect desired, you would want the um, hardened core AP load, not the normal ball load. The downside, of course, it should, all things being equal, take more shots to down a suspect than a larger caliber, shall we say. They're very tiny, tiny little bullets traveling very quickly, but not fast enough and, and not, with, not with enough mass to really more reliably incapacitate. Talk. Suspect is incapacitated. So this in the game is the LVAR. Now that's based on US military version of the integrally suppressed, effectively the MCX Rattler. Although it's not, I don't think it's called the Rattler when it's the integrally suppressed version. We've just taken delivery of a Rattler, which I'm very excited about. I haven't got it to show you because it is substantially different to this. I may as well be showing you the MCX carbine. The integrity suppressed one, the Virtus. Virtus is something of a. I think this is three hundred blackout as well. Yeah, well, the 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 real low visibility assault weapon, I think is the correct American acronym, is by default three hundred blackout because the idea is to combine the integral suppressor of the MP5 SD with the sort of stopping power, if I can use that abused phrase, of the 300 blackout round. So as far as I know, it's always 300 blackout. Now, the MCX family is convertible, so you could, if you wish, have it running in 556 as well. But why would you want to when you can have the pretty devastating effect of 300 blackout, depending on the ammunition that you use? But here it seems to be quite realistically effective. This is something that I covered recently on the Royal Armouries channel. If you're interested, do go back a few weeks now and check out our video on the MP5-10, which is what this is. 10 for 10 millimeter. Uh, this is an MP5-10 in A2 configuration with the old school, well, second generation old school handguard on it. The one on the screen is the A3 pattern with what looks like uh, semi-auto, two-round burst, and full auto, which is the FBI hostage rescue team standard issue, or was, late 90s, early 2000s. The version we have, it turns out, was standard issue for special agents. So FBI special agents that were issued a, a submachine gun or a carbine, perhaps more accurately, because it's apparently, reliably informed, their 9mm MP5s were semi-auto only, like UK police ones are. Then when they went to the MP5-10 in 10mm auto, they went for this option, giving them two round burst as the upper limit. So they went, they upgraded from semi to, to two round burst. That's something I didn't know when I recorded our video. So bonus factoid for you there. The ready or not version is absolutely hostage rescue team. So if you're trying to do a sort of a bit of role play <laughs> as that unit, that's the weapon you might want to use. Uh, other main thing to watch out for on the MP510 is the bolt hold open. Works just like an AR-15 requested by the FBI. Um, it's the only MP5, in fact, the only HK roller delay firearm in existence with a bolt hold open device. H and K are allergic to these things. Yeah, that's something that I I did notice actually, is that there's no slap. This is, yeah. So it, it's one of those things where you go, hang on, something not quite right, but you wouldn't necessarily notice what it was. And it's that there's no need to do the 
lock it open, mag change, slap the handle because it holds open and you just touch the bolt release just like a, all the other boring firearms. <laughs> One one thing that I do notice about Ready or Not is the environment in which you're fighting. Like having a long shotgun or a long rifle, it's more obvious when you're like bumping into doorways or your teammate is is close yes. to you. Whereas the MP9 in the in the levels that I was using it, post tunnels, and everything was a little more usable because it's shorter, closer to your body, not bumping into so much stuff. That's a very important and, and really interesting point. Actually, I can't think of another game. I'm sure they exist. I can't think of one at the moment where it matters how long the weapon is. You know, in theory, the gun model is in front of you, the environment is there. Worst case, from from third person perspective, a barrel can clip through a you know a door jam or something, and it won't actually affect you in any way. This game, it really does matter whether you have a long, cumbersome weapon or something much shorter. Obviously, putting the suppressor on makes this thing like significantly longer. But it's that trade-off. But yeah, and worth taking shorter weapons on different missions. Now, just like in, in the real world, the compromise there is to take something like the Mark 18 from this game, something that has enough power to do the job, it's quick to reload, has, has the capacity, it does everything that you need from a tactical firearm, except for really long ranges. Like, police really shouldn't be shouldn't need, unless they're police marksmen, and even then, probably shouldn't be opening fire, well, certainly beyond what, a couple of hundred yards or something. Still, uh, you, you're gonna feel more comfortable with a longer barrel rifle in some of these big outdoor levels. But if you're going in, kicking down doors, something like the, uh, the MP9 is probably uh, what you'll want. Or, you know, if you're a traditionalist like me, take the MP5. Right, standalone version of the M320 grenade launcher. Typically, police will be using 37 millimeter less lethal launchers. The M320 is decidedly lethal. But of course, you can shop around for less lethal rounds for it. In, in, in the game, the 320, I mostly used it for CS gas, but you can use flashbangs and stinger balls. It doesn't have um, HE. It doesn't have frag. Okay, now that doesn't surprise me from a from a real world perspective. High explosive frag grenades flying around is usually frowned upon, but the way the gun is, the, the weapon is presented in the game, it's not painted as less lethal. Uh, it's not less lethal only. For all I know, there are police forces out there using otherwise lethal grenade launchers for less lethal purposes. Certainly, um, tear gas, CS gas, yes. Uh, the military will, will deploy that as, as well from military style launchers like this. So my, my first impression is always, oh, it's a frag grenade launcher. But of course, in this context, it's not. So this thing that looks like a sort of off-brand airsoft gun or paintball gun kind of is. <laughs> it's a pepper ball launcher. We're looking at acquiring something similar, but uh, nothing quite as sci-fi looking as this. This uh, is based on a real one, I, I gather. Can't really speak to the realism of the impacts, but to me, with the little bits shooting off and the cloud of particulate, it looks right. No case ejection, of course, because this is just essentially paintball. Well, not paintballs, but paintball caliber spheres. I noticed if you didn't deploy a gas mask at the same time and you'd leave this cloud of pepper, it would uh, mess you up as you were going to arrest the suspect or something. Really, that's impressive, actually. Most effects like this in games, as you as you know, disperse you know very quickly. But to actually have it hanging around in the air like that, I need to have a go at less lethal. It's just not my not my preferred method. Where would we be without a pump action shotgun in a tactical shooter? Well, you might argue in this day and age, you might not even see a pump action shotgun in a tactical situation, but they definitely have their uses, as we've said before on the se in the series. Superb Nova. <laughs> That's very slightly legally different. <laughs> so this is the Benelli Supernova. So Urbino Superb Nova. Very good. We have a, a Nova 
not the supernova they're very similar but it's at the end of the day much like a Remington 870 or a Mossberg 500 for all the cool Beretta slash Benelli same company styling it's not much different really you could do all the same stuff with an 870 this is lighter I guess and better sighting options. That's the main improvement this is going to bring over the traditional shotguns. Worth commenting, I guess, that you know this game beautifully models a whole range of different firearms. You don't really get that choice in a unit like this. You, you're pretty much going to have to use whatever the department says you can use. Now, you might have some, le some lobbying power to influence the choice, but you're going to have pretty much one type of shotgun, plus speed bag shotguns, whatever. One type of carbine, one type of pistol. They, they might let you use your own pistol if it's the same cartridge type. Right, there we go. Ready or not, updated. Fantastic range of weapons. Really well done, big fan of that, of that game. As always, we here at the Royal Armouries have three museums. Uh, we have a temporary exhibition of some Let's say video game adjacent firearms, highly decorated things, gold plated Kalashnikov, for example, uh, on display here at Leeds until the end of June. So if you can make it here, please do. Uh, it's free. And check out our Royal Armouries YouTube channel as well. Thank you. See you next time.